Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at elpisastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So this is my second part of um, my take on the astrology for April 2024. It's an important month. And I've already done the first part of this. If you would like to listen to the first part of April, including my take on the uh, total new moon eclipse in Aries, please watch my first video. So in this video, I'm going to concentrate on the Uranus uh, Jupiter conjunction and the effects of that and how that rolls into the full moon that will be in Scorpio. This is not an eclipse, but I'm telling you this full moon is also extremely important. And in fact, my prediction is, is that if we are going to have something explosive and unexpected happen, especially from a, um, a mundane standpoint in the general collective, it's going to be towards that full moon in Scorpio. I did do uh, an actual video on the Jupiter conjunct Uranus, and I include all sun signs as well as ascendants. I'll put the link below uh, for those that want to listen to uh, a little more detail. Um, all right, so let's start off with that. So we're going to be starting off with that Jupiter conjunct Uranus. Now, it does operate, generally speaking, on and off within a couple degrees or even a degree all the month of April. But if we're going to look at exactitude, we're looking at the 20th or 21st of April. And we're looking at the degree point to be just over 21 degrees. But there will be something happening at 22 degrees too that is in relation to the full moon in Scorpio. I'll talk about that in a minute. So what is this talking about? The Jupiter conjunct Uranus, generally speaking, is viewed as a very positive event. Jupiter likes to bring in big benefits. You can almost say that he's like Santa Claus or Father Christmas. Um, he's the greater benefic. He likes to expand everything it touches or he touches. And of course, then we have Uranus, which is unexpected. Um, bolts coming out from the blue, big turnarounds. But the key here is that big turnarounds can be emphasized in two ways, right? So we could see big benefits coming in for some people, but just as likely, you could also have the opposite happening where there might be some loss of some sort come in unexpectedly as well. Um, we really have to look at where this falls in your chart. I am going to be doing the Ascendant and Sun Signs after I finish this general introduction. Everything's timestamped, so you can go directly to that chapter if you want to do that and not listen to me. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Um, now, if we think about, you know, both these Jupiter and Uranus being in Taurus, we have to remember that Taurus is a fixed sign. It does not like change. And with Uranus introducing not only change, but unexpected change, some of these changes that are coming in may not be necessarily welcome. The other thing is that from a collective level, this could increase things happening on our Earth, literally on our Earth. So this could be earthquakes, volcanoes, that type of thing, shifting of tectonic plates, that sort of thing. Um, this can also bring in unexpected enlightenment. For those that are open to receiving an enlightenment, this could be the time period that that happens. And honestly, this is operating all the month of April. It's just, you know, we like to pick the exactitude dates as well. So... Um, for some folks, there may be some great benefits that come in their way. Um, in particular, we're looking at, you know, the money houses, right? So if you're looking for money, do you have this operating in either the second house or that eighth house, right? There's other areas as well. We're also potentially looking at the fifth house and the eleventh house. And of course, the first house is always important because it's all about you. Now, Taurus in particular, obviously, is going to be affected but when we look at the degree points, I would say the orb I would take for having an actual effect would be from 20 to 23 degrees of Taurus. So we're really looking at that tight orb here with regards to something significant happening potentially in your life, right? Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that's happening here uh, in the month besides the eclipse, which I've already covered in my other video. 
So the next lunation is going to be a full moon, and that's going to be in the opposite sign of Taurus, which is Scorpio. So we have a full moon in Scorpio at 4 Scorpio, 17 minutes on the 23rd of April at 4.49 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Now hold that thought. Just prior to that full moon happening, we also have the full moon squaring Pluto at 2 degrees. So remember the full moon I've just said is at just over 4 degrees of Scorpio. So we want to look at the time period just prior to that full moon when it's at 2 degrees of Scorpio where there will be an exact square with Pluto. That is actually going to occur around 12.27 p.m. Remember that the eclipse or the full moon rather itself happens at 4.49 p.m. These are all Pacific Daylight Time periods, right? So this is saying to me there's a story here that begins just prior to that full moon. And the story involves the moon squaring Pluto. And so this is a big deal. Um, the moon can represent the people and Pluto can represent power. So this says to me there is something I would say in the collective that's going to be happening with regards to the people um, and suffering in some way with this whole power thing that's happening, right? So it's almost like I get power being exerted over the people. But this is actually quite significant, this square, uh, as it occurs the same day, just a few hours prior to the full moon actually happening, right? So I would look towards this full moon for some big things happening as well. Now, what happens is, is this moon, we're still talking about the Scorpio moon, is going to go on then, after squaring Pluto, being a full moon, to oppose the Jupiter conjunct Uranus that I just spoke about in Taurus, because Taurus is opposite to Scorpio, right? And so we're going to have that happen as well. The degree is slightly different. We're looking at 22 degrees. And the actual day we're looking at is the 25th of April, and the time is 3 a.m. And of course, again, these are Pacific uh, Daylight Time periods, right? And so this is another big that's, thing that's going to happen. The moon is opposed to Jupiter and Uranus. Jupiter and Uranus is all about what? Some unexpected thing happening um, that's going to be kind of blown up. Now, Jupiter on its own can also not only express benefits and represent benefits, but it can also represent foreign things and foreign people. So I see this, and this could occur in any area. I know we've got certain countries that are highlighted right now, but this could also be another country. We're talking about something unexpected happening here with regards to the people in a foreign country. And that is going to be happening around the 25th of April. This is with Scorpio involved, and I would say this is like... <clears throat> um, you know, it's like the Scorpio. I look at this part of Scorpio can be different iterations of different um, uh, animals, right? And the highest, of course, is the phoenix rising from the action. But I see this one as a scorpion. And the scorpion attacking. I think there's going to be some kind of attack going on of the people to some big power here. And this is going to happen around this opposition of that moon to Jupiter and Uranus around the 25th of April. I've earmarked the 3 a.m. mark um, on Pacific Daylight Time. Um, if you've got this in your personal chart, this could just represent um, some emotional breakthrough, right? So I've just been speaking more about the collective, but this could also represent an emotional breakthrough for you. Maybe you've been waiting for your whole life. Now, I am going to be discussing next your um, sun signs and or ascendants, whichever resonates with you. And I'll talk about that whole Jupiter conjunct Uranus, as well as this full moon and the effects in your individual signs, right? So we'll look at that next. So the next day after this opposition with Jupiter and Uranus by the moon, we're going to have Mercury going direct at around 15, 16 degrees of Aries. And that is on the 26th of April. So this is good news. You should really technically wait for it to go out of shadow 
Um, it really won't go out of shadow until May. Um, I did put it in my previous video, video, but I'll tell you here. It's the 14th of May that that whole uh, Mercury will be out of shadow completely, right? And many things cleared up with regards to communications, writings, computers, anything regarding that, right? Now, when we look at the 29th of April, uh, we are looking at Mars conjunct Neptune. Now, I spoke about, in the first part of this video, I spoke about Mars conjuncting Saturn and the effects of that. Now we have Mars conjuncting uh, Neptune. And this is um, not the greatest conjunction to have happen because Mars wants to take action and Neptune kind of can't make their minds up. So this could play out, say, individually where you want to take action somewhere and there's some confusion happening or someone's not going along with it or um, there's an element of um, deception even that could come in here too with this whole setup. Uh, of Jupiter conjunct Neptune, and of course Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces. But it can also speak to, at its highest, spiritual warriors, right? And maybe a spiritual warrior too. It can also talk about religious fever of some sort, or fervor. Um, but there's going to be some people that actually are going to have some compassion fatigue. That's what came out for me on this too. This whole Mars conjunct Neptune is compassion fatigue. And that's a significant thing where, you know, there's going to be some people that have been just really maybe in their job just doing too much with regards to giving all to others and not taking back themselves. So there may be a wake up call for some people here where maybe you've got to take care, better care of yourself. But as I said, there's also this religious fever that can come in as well where um, these religious factions may rise up and cause some problems here. All right, let's take a little peek at May. So in May, I talked about Mercury being out of shadow in May. We're going to have a Venus square Pluto at uh, 2 Taurus and 2 Aquarius. Uh, we're going to have a new moon in um, Taurus as well. So for some Taurians that maybe have some big uh, events happening in April, the actual new start may actually be at that new moon in Taurus. We're going to have a full moon in Sagittarius, and guess what? It's at two degrees. And guess what? It's going to be squaring Pluto too. So although it's not as action-packed uh, with regards to being in the eclipse season, we certainly have May that's also going to have some, you know, butting of heads with people in power, and especially with Sagittarius, that full moon, talking about foreign nations, right? All right, folks, my next thing I'm going to do is do your ascendance as well as your sun signs. So Sagittarius, when we look at that Jupiter conjunct Uranus, that's going to be in your sixth house. So the sixth house represents, generally speaking, either what you do day to day if you're retired or you don't work, or it represents the job you do day to day. And it also represents your health. Mental health, physical health, that type of thing, right? And so any or all these things may be up for you with regards to, I would say, a bit of a shake-up. But the shake-up is going to be favorable for you. Jupiter, generally speaking, exerts beautiful, beneficial energy. Uranus brings in the unexpected part. So you could unexpectedly, you know, have a teacher or an advisor pop up for you that is of great benefit for you with regards to getting your nutrition in shape, getting literally your body in shape, getting your mental uh, aspects of yourself in shape too. So all these are favorably aspected for you, but with an unexpected element, right? But it can also mean that you decide to change up your job, that you want to leave your job. And you may, Sagittarius, make this at the spur of the moment. I'm not doing this job anymore. So knowing that this energy is coming for you, Sagittarius, and I'm making this in March, think carefully about if you do want to do that, um, what can you set up now that will facilitate you maybe leaving a job, whether you stay in the same company and go to a different job or leaving that whole situation completely. 
What do you need to maybe potentially set up now? That makes it a little easier for you to do that, right? Okay, when we look at that full moon in Scorpio, well, that falls in your 12th house. And so the 12th house represents a number of things. It can represent anything to do with behind the scenes. Now, Scorpio as a sign tends to be very secretive. So there's going to be some Sagittarians that'll be working uh, on some kind of secret-like, behind-the-scenes-like activity of some sort. And this could occur in places like hospitals, ashrams, any government offices. All these things, or any of these things, could be highlighted for you at this full moon. Um, it could mean that um, you also have a big illumination of your psychological self. Scorpio is very associated with any, anything behind the scenes, underground, inside our heads, that type of thing. So there may be, this would be an awesome time maybe, to even though it's a full moon in Scorpio, um, to look at aspect of your psychological self and maybe see what might be tripping you up here that you can clean up and let go of, maybe with the assistance um, of someone that can actually give you professional advice of some sort. Because that moon in a few days will go on to oppose uh, Jupiter and Uranus at 22 degrees of um, Taurus, there could be somebody that comes in here that you enter into um, a, an arrangement with, and this could be a therapist, that helps you figure out that stuff inside your mind. But it could also equally have you ending, so this is just a full moon in Scorpio, it's not an eclipse. It could have you ending um, maybe something that you've been doing um, maybe in the metaphysical world, maybe you finish off uh, some kind of education and you're ready to go to be a professional with regards to something metaphysical or a shaman of some sort, right? It could also be that you've been off at an ashram and you wrap favorably wrap up your visit at this ashram um, and it's a great benefit to you in terms of, you know, who you are inside. All right, take care of yourself, Sagittarius. All right, folks, I'm sending everybody um, a lot of positive energy and um, real optimism is what I'm going to say. Real optimism for big change uh, in our lives in April that brings us the things that we need to get on the path that we need to be on um, and to manifest some things in our lives uh, that help change our lives around for the positive, right? So take care of yourself, everybody. As always, I like to do people's charts. All my information is below. Please contact me. If you've got any comments, you know I always like listening to those too and reading them. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Hi, everyone. It's Elizabeth here from Alpus Astrology. I'd like just to give you a little more detail about um, what I do uh, with regards to the services I can offer you. Certainly, I suggest that um, if you've not had your chart ever, do ever done, this would be a good time to do it. Um, contact me. All my contact de details are below and we can uh, talk to each other back and forth and arrange something for you. So I offer different services. I offer um, a full astrology report for two of my services. One is where I look at both your natal chart and your progress chart in detail. I accompany that with a physical chart as well as your charts that I'm looking at for that year. I do what's called a transit chart, which really involves your progressed chart for that year in combination with your natal chart. I give you a report for that as well. Typically, I'd be updating an existing report for you. I have a lot of clients that come back to me yearly. And then the other service that I offer is a combination of um, taking a quick look at the astrology. Typically, it would be a year or two year, what stands out for me, looking at that and then adding in at the end a tarot card reading to accompany it. I record that and send that to you pre-recorded. So that's not a live session. The other two that I do are live session. And then I offer obviously custom. I do a lot of um, picking marriage dates, um, compatibility. I typically use what are called Davison charts uh, or Sinistry as well, where I can combine 
two charts to see how does uh, how do these two charts of these people work together. More often, it's going to be sort of romantic relationships, but it can also be business relationships too. How well do we work together type thing by producing one chart. So I do all that. As I said, I would love to do your chart. Contact me below and we can work together to make that happen for you.